what we haven't talked about yet is the animus, the racial hatred that motivated Johnson and the comparisons to Trump. But lay out that period and how he was trying to continue the disenfranchisement of black people and of freed slaves, freed enslaved yes, people. There, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, there is some misconception uh, advocated even by Mike Pence in a recent op-ed that Johnson was simply continuing President Lincoln's policies towards the South. What Johnson did was basically endanger the result of the Civil War, which was emancipation. Um, he allowed Southern state governments uh, to pretty much issue black codes that would put black people back to as close a state to slavery as possible. There was racial terrorism, outrages, as they called it then, uh, against a freed people throughout the South. Uh, people were being murdered. In one case, Johnson personally intervened uh, to make sure the man responsible for it uh, would get off scot-free. And he kept interfering in the reconstruction plans of Congress. Now, under President Lincoln, the federal government had established the Freedmen's Bureau to oversee this transition from slavery to freedom in the South. Uh, when that bill to extend the life of the Bureau came before Johnson, he vetoed it. Uh, there was another bill, the Civil Rights Law, which the first civil rights law ever passed in United States history, uh, to ensure the protection of the persons and property of freed people who were being attacked with impunity uh, by former Confederates and Southern elites. Um, in both cases, Johnson vetoed those laws. Uh, and he was, in a way, really guided by this idea that the United States should remain what he called a white man's country. Uh, and that kind of very uh, crude racism guided Johnson, this notion that if you would extend some of the even the most basic citizenship rights uh, to the formerly enslaved, uh, that you were somehow taking away rights from whites. Uh, that's a very pernicious logic that has motivated racists uh, in this country since then. Um, and in that sense, I would say that if you look at the scene immediately after the Civil War in the South, the Republicans in Congress had no choice but to intervene and to rein in Johnson in his very sort of destructive way of completely undermining the results of a very hard-fought war, which was basically emancipation and the end of slavery. But ultimately, he was not convicted by just one vote, because the Senate needed a, a two-thirds a two -thirds majority to, uh, to remove him, correct? Yes. Uh, Johnson came very close to being convicted. Um, it, there was uh, seven Republicans, moderates, who voted to uh, let Johnson um, go scot-free uh, if he promised not to interfere in Reconstruction again. And they were given that assurance. But one of those votes belonged to Edmund Ross, a senator from Kansas, extremely corrupt, uh, who had bought his way, literally, into the Senate through bribery. Uh, and unfortunately, he was put in John F. Kennedy's uh, book, Profiles and Courage, as a courageous man who voted his conscience. Now, we know that book was probably ghostwritten, uh, but it went out under JFK's name. And I think part of it may be to appease Dixiecrats uh, at that time. But it has lent um, a very, it has sort of propagated a false view of uh, history, uh, especially the history of Reconstruction. Unfortunately, Mike Pence, in that editorial uh, in The Wall Street Journal that I referred to, uh, picks up on this theme that Edmund Ross was a profile in courage. We know now, through the work of historians uh, like David Stewart, uh, who has written on the impeachment of Johnson, um, that, in fact, Edmund Ross was bribed for his vote. So he was not a profile in courage. He was a profile in corruption. And uh, for the Republican Party today to bring up both, uh, you know, a defense of Johnson and portray Ross uh, as an honorable person uh, is astounding for the party of Lincoln, <coughs> for the party of Thaddeus Stevens and the radical Republicans who led the charge for the impeachment of Andrew Johnson. Wait.